Hello there, I am Rangarn, and I have been playing games for quite a while now. Recently I picked up Minecraft, and um, after playing some Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved on Expert, um, that was actually the first mode I actually tried, and it was really challenging and really fun, um, we wanted to try out some, um, some Skyblock, uh, a bunch of friends and I. And uh, this is going to be my second playthrough, um, and I thought, you know, it might be interesting to record uh, what I do um, and just put it up on YouTube and see what kind of reception it receives and um, and so this is my um, Feed the Beast Infinity Evolve Skyblock playthrough I hope you enjoy the video Z videos alright so what you see here is basically a cobblestone generator um, now, in Skyblock, um, the way you start off is you start off in the air, basically in the middle of nowhere, just suspended in the air, over nine pieces of uh, dirt, nine blocks of dirt. You look around, you have a chest, and um, inside the chest you have this chicken hammer. With the chicken hammer, you are able to break cobblestone down into gravel. But before you can break cobblestone down, you have to plant a lot of trees. And so, we plant a lot of trees, we chop them down, we plant more trees, we chop those down, and we um, put the saplings into oak barrels, and then we turn them into dirt. And once you have enough dirt, um, say five pieces of dirt, you can then create a basic cobblestone generator, as you can see here. Um, so you probably want to build this after you've expanded your platform out a little bit. This is uh, the beginning of uh, basically your mining experience on Skyblock. Uh, it's a little different to the traditional uh, mining experience in Minecraft where you actually go out into the world and you explore and mine. Here everything is basically centered around um, things that you can automate, things that you can um, do, from the, do from your base in the sky. So as, as you can probably see here, um, I have expanded my platform quite a bit. I have a few of the oak barrels. This uh, compressed gravel is being broken down into sand. And what I can do there is I can either uh, leave the sand as it, as it is and then run that through sieves in order to get materials out of it and resources out of it, or I can further compress it and um, turn that into dust, which I can then uh, break down further, um, run through the sieve and then get uh, redstone, for instance, which uh, is the only place, you, that is the only place you can get redstone, um, is through uh, sifting dust. So here you basically see me compressing the sand because I am going to turn it into dust. So I've uh, I've been doing this thing where where I stack the um, the things I want to break down with a hammer, and it's just jumping on top of it and then just hammering it down from the top. Um, it's sort of it's sort of okay that way to begin with because you don't have a giant platform. But towards, uh, like once you have a big enough platform, it's way easier to just lay it out on, on the platform sideways and just uh, you know, run along and hammer it down that way. So after some time, I was able to uh, gather enough diamond in order to make a block breaker. With the block breaker, I can automate the process of gathering cobblestone from the cobblestone generator. So I don't have to stand there for uh, hours and hours on end in order to get cobble and then break it down into gravel. The next thing I'm going to be working on is the coke oven. I've now begun to construct a platform underneath uh, the original Skyblock platform by um, digging a hole through where the water source is in order to extend, um, in order to flow down the water source, and then uh, placing a block underneath the platform because I want to put my coke oven here. So. I have basically um, created this platform where I want to put both a coke oven and um, the blast furnace in the future right next to it. And um, because, they're, because they're a 3x3 three three structure, um, I want them to be in the ground. I don't want them to be on top of the ground because they take up a lot of space. So this also serves another purpose in that if I want to do a mob farm later on, I can have it underneath the platform without the risk of mobs actually spawning and then uh, um, destroying stuff on on my platform. In order to get creosote oil, we need to either put wood, 
not wood planks, wood, into the coke oven or coal and that'll turn into coal coke and then the wood turns into charcoal. You also want to put either a bottle or a bucket into the coke oven so that the uh, creosote oil has an output. You have a way of actually extracting the creosote oil. Right now I am making treated wood planks and the way you do that is you put wood planks in a circle in the uh, crafting table like you would make a chest and then you put the bottle of creosote oil in the middle. Now we can use the treated wood planks to make treated wood sticks and then with the treated wood sticks you put um, you put two of the wood sticks in the middle of the crafting table um, and, and off to the side and then you put iron ingots around the the other side of the, t of the crafting table like so to make the forge hammer. And with the forge hammer you can then make um, iron plates or any kind of metal plates that you need for various um, various machines. In this instance you see me crafting a bucket, basically a quintessential tool if you want to progress down a tech ladder. I've decided that I want to make an infinite water source or a renewable water source next to the coke oven and there it is. This serves um, two purposes, basically it's so that we have an infinite water source that is reachable. Um, and that is not up on the uh, cobblestone generator because it saves us time having to travel up there. And the other reason is this water source is just a one source, so it's not infinite. If I were to scoop this up with a bucket, it would just disappear. The next thing I'm going to be working on is the smeltery. Now between the smeltery and the blast furnace, I think the smeltery is more important in the beginning because it allows you to break down all your ores and it's also a storage and it allows you to make advanced tools. So to make the smeltery, we need grout, which is clay, um, gravel, and sand. And to make clay, you basically use dust, and then you combine the dust with water in an oak barrel. Uh, to make sand, you just break down gravel with a hammer, and to make gravel, you break down cobblestone with a hammer. Once you have the grout, you need to cook it in a furnace. You need four seared brick to make a seared bricks, basically. So it's, you can't use the individual bricks. You need to use uh, one that is created by putting four of them in the crafting table and it yields a seared bricks. Now that I have enough seared bricks, I want to measure out a three by three space in the ground. Um, if you're like me, I want to expand the smeltery so it has uh, a lot of um, uh, tanks that are outside of the smeltery and like fluid ducts that actually lead um, lead outside of the smeltery. It serves two purposes. It's as it's aesthetically pleasing, and uh, it also allows you to store more liquids. So you have the three by three. You put the seared bricks in the 3x3 three three, and then you lace the outside with a 1x3 like so. Now, in order to make the smeltery actually functional, you're going to need other components as well. So I'm just going to come over here and I will show you what else we need. Well, first and foremost, we need a seared tank. This is where we store the lava and it's basically like the power source of the smeltery. And then you want to make a couple of drains. I normally start out with three drains um, because I like to have three of my drains um, uh, lead into two casting tables and one casting basin. This just helps you know, um, speed up the process of getting liquids out of the smeltery. So you make all those like so. And last but not least, you also need the smeltery controller, uh, which is basically the uh, interface uh, block of the multi-block. Now, the way I normally have my smeltery set out is I like to put my drains in the front like this. So I'm just gonna get rid of these for a sec. I'm gonna pop these drains out in front. And I'm going to dig this up so I can put the casting table and the casting basins there, like so. Casting basin. 
And you have to attach the faucets, of course, to the seared uh, drain. Uh, smeltery drain, sorry. And then I normally put the smeltery controller in the middle and then the tank right next to it. And to make it light up and work, you need to fill out the next level. So another to fill out 12 blocks. So there it is. Now you know it's... That's how you know it's uh, functioning if the light is on. Now that that's done, um, I can finally get to work on the blast furnace, which is uh, the multi-block we need to make steel or refined iron ingots. Um, to make the multi-block, we're going to make the TNT version because gunpowder is really easy to come by um, on Skyblock because you get it through sifting dust. So you combine that with sand to make TNT and then to make um, the multi, the actual uh, blast furnace bricks or blocks, you need sand, bricks and TNT. So you need 36 uh, blocks total because it's a 3x4x3 three by by three with two hollow inside. So I'm going to make that and I'll be right back. I went off and assembled the blast furnace. So you can see there it is just as high as the coke oven because I dug the platform to be one lower than the one where the coke oven is on top of. And that'll now um, smelt steel. Oh, that will now cook iron into steel as long as you put charcoal or coal in there. Okay, so... I kind of went off on a tangent and forgot to record a lot of things but as you can see I have expanded my humble sky platform a little bit more than what it was before. Um, so here you can see we have a couple of cacti and um, cacti and spruce saplings. Spruce saplings you get from sifting dirt and cactus you get from sifting sand. I also made I have also had uh, visitors, there were two squids in there before, but there's only one now. I guess this guy ate the other one. Survival of the fittest, those googly eyes. So I'm going to come around here and show you what I've done. I have a uh, hopper feeding into an oak barrel that's basically feeding leaves that I use a, 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 a shear in order to turn those things into dirt. Now with the dirt, of course, we use to um, sieve through uh, the oak sieve in order to get the different types of saplings. So now we have rubber saplings, uh, rubber trees, and, and uh, sp spruce. I've also made a tool forge in the meantime, which is great because I really wanted an electrum lumber axe. It allows you to chop a tree down with one swing, which is really good. It's a great time saver, and I'd suggest you do it. And Especially if you have plans on using a lot of charcoal later on, because I will be progressing into making steam power. So I'll be needing a lot of charcoal. I've also made an iron sword, which basically allows me to propel myself um, forward. It's kind of like a lunge. It's got a lunge attack. So doing that makes, uh, makes it much easier to get around. I'm just going to light this up because I don't want any monsters spawning on top and blowing up my beautiful platform. The main way I'm generating power right now is through these generators which uh, produce EU. A lot of the things I have at the moment on the platform re um, require RF power but it doesn't matter if you have these LV connectors and LV wires. That means that it will take any form of power and then transform it into the type of power that the machine needs. So these generators run off coal and they are feeding these energy cells as well. And it looks a bit messy at the moment, but it's just something I have to live with until I actually trans um, change um, into using just flux ducts. I have a uh, transfer node feeding into an automatic hammerer which uh, then turns the cobblestone into gravel and then through a hopper feeds it into an auto sieve. So there's a little person in there who's got headphones on and he is sieving away. There he is. He's sieving away and um, what he sieves is basically uh, he sieves the gravel and then it's transferred down into the chest below. So first step of automation is basically on its way 
I just need to produce more power now and I think that's the next goal. Oh, I also have a laser farm here or a laser room. What I normally like to do with my laser room is I like to build it underground and then once I actually have, you know, 40 lasers built up, it's going to look really spectacular um, during the late game. We have the metal former here and the compressor here, which basically were the two uh, machines needed to make the tool forge. Now it's a bit tricky with the uh, metal formers and oh, well, most of the IC2 machinery. Um, you basically have to kind of plan out where you want to put them because they break really easily if you use um, a pickaxe on them. So basically you can't use a pickaxe on them otherwise the machine will break and then all you will get in return is a basic machine frame um, and you will lose all the other uh, um, all the other material that you use in order to make one of those machines. The way you almost safely move them is you use a wrench made out of bronze and um, even even by using the wrench um, there is still a chance that you will break the item and only get a basic machi machine casing back in return. So my tip would be just to have an, a rough idea of where you put where you want to put these machines, especially the IC2 ones, um, and just not touch them after that. I think that's enough content for one video. Um, I don't want to bore you guys too much, and there's still a lot of things that I need to do on the Skyblock in order to make it, in order to flesh it out, in order to achieve my, my grand goal of um, actually terraforming Skyblock in order to make it look like, you know, a world of Minecraft. So basically, I'm going to have grassy fields and mountains hopefully and uh, monsters as well and hopefully you know it's because I need an end game goal for these games in order to f to to motivate myself to, to play for a longer period of time um, so that's gonna be my end game goal for now um, this is my this is only my second playthrough the first playthrough I basically progressed to nuclear power and a few other games had come out like uh, we went to play Diablo 3 for a couple of days, and then um, we went back to play uh, Path of Exile for a couple of days. So now we're back to Minecraft, and I really want to get this uh, a good shot, and then try to flesh out this playthrough as much as I can. I only get faster and faster um, through these playthroughs, so I can envision myself doing a third playthrough, uh, a third playthrough sometime in the future, where. I will probably record the whole thing and it'll just be not not be as fragmented and it won't take up as much time because we all know what we're gonna do um, so thank you for watching and if you like it um, you know leave a like if you don't like it let me know in the comments why you don't like it you know what I can improve on um, I do realize that sometimes my mic seems to be picking up a lot of my computer fan but I can't really help that at the moment um, the, I, I think I just need to upgrade my computer because it's been about four years I think um, just getting a bit slow so I hope you enjoyed the video and can't wait till you watch my next one thanks see ya